Hey guys, it's Mickey. It's Kevin here. I'm a nurse. And I'm a doctor. Which obviously means that I graduated from nursing school and Kev graduated from medical school. Anyways, both of these curriculums are obviously very notorious. We're having very intense um, amounts of memorization. There's a lot of information that you need to know. Just to give you an example, some of the courses we have to take include pharmacology, anatomy, multiple courses of pathophysiology, OB, the list goes on and on and on. And just to give you an example, in my pharmacology course, I had to memorize over 5,000 drugs, and this includes the brand name, the generic name, the mechanism of action, the side effects, the black box warnings, the indications. That's just part of it. I guess I had to do that too, right? Anyway, so today we're actually going to be talking about the most effective and best ways for you to study and memorize all this information in nursing and medical school. So this video is actually broken down into four major points. Number one, having a consistent study routine. Number two, space repetition. Number three, active recall. And number four, prioritization of information. And all the timestamps will be linked below. Point number one, having a consistent study routine. So within every quarter or semester, you typically have a really consistent schedule. So whether you like to use a physical planner or Google Calendar, it's super important to actually block off specific time that you're studying for each of the different courses that you're taking. It's really important to kind of understand who you are yourself. Are you a morning person? Mm -hmm. Are you an evening person and try to create a schedule based on that. If you're a procrastinator and you have a big test coming up, you should probably block off the day before a test. But if you like to study a little bit every day, you should block off an hour or two every night. The environment in which you're studying is also super important. And again, this is kind of knowing who you are as a person. For me, I like to study in like a quiet environment where there are no distractions. Other people like to study where there's a little bit of white noise. The really important thing is that you have to create an individualized study routine. So yours is gonna look very different than maybe your classmates does. You know, being really honest with yourself and having a good conversation. Like I know, for example, I struggle when I am studying in group settings. I have to learn information on my own before I can kind of go and quiz other people. And so studying with other people actually wastes a ton of my time. And so knowing and identifying that in advance is extremely helpful to planning my study routine. Routine. This section basically kind of states just like a foundation for how you're going to study and that foundation really helps you uh, make studying successful. So Mickey and I like to buy stationary like pens and little cute notebooks to kind of help motivate our studies. Mm -hmm. um, so like before a big test or something we'll go to the store and get some new gear treat yourself <laughs> yeah and that makes kind of the rest of the studying experience more enjoyable i think the big things are organizing the time that you study and the space that you study in as well as the kind of gear and things that you get to study with Number two is actually space repetition. Now, don't you ever feel like when you learn something, the first day it's pretty fresh, second day, maybe you can still recall it, and then within a week, you definitely don't remember anything you learned. So the best way you can actually combat this is with space repetition, which is a technique where you are repeating learned concepts at increasing intervals until it's embedded in your long-term memory. So an example of this would be to actually use flashcards, and then depending on how confident you are in that answer, you would repeat that same flashcard again in X number of days. You can think about the human brain kind of like a muscle, like your biceps. You know, if you wanted to get stronger arms, you wouldn't just go out and lift 100 pounds on the first day. What you would do is lift five pounds and then rest a day maybe, and then work up to 10 pounds and kind of increase that at increasing intervals. So it's kind of the same concept. This concept kind of ties into the theory of memory. You know, how, you know, there's like a logarithm curve where it goes like here, and then this is kind of how you remember stuff. It's kind of trying to make it so that you, your curve doesn't fall off to the bottom. We will insert a picture here. Yes. Now it's actually all about studying smarter and not harder. So instead of creating your own questions or flashcards, you can actually just sign up for Lecturio. If you aren't familiar with Lecturio already, they actually are made for future as well as current medical and nursing students. Lecturio Medical and Lecturio Nursing offers extensive question banks, exam preparation and assessments, space repetition quizzes, video lectures, and more. You can actually study from anywhere in the world as long as you have a computer or phone. So Lecturio has an extensive video library on a variety of different topics um, and you know spanning from the medical field to the nursing field. What I like about the video is that you can kind of customize your speed. I like to learn at 2x speed. When I hear um, Kevin watching the videos it's always like <laughs> I mean if it's too slow I kind of lose my attention span. 
Two X has been perfect for him, but it kind of depends on how fast the person's speaking. Sure. For each video, they also have really clear learning objectives, so you know exactly what the goal is. And at the same time, at the end, they have a quiz to kind of recap all the things you're supposed to learn. For each quiz question that you answer, you can actually select a happy face, an okay face, or a sad face regarding your confidence in the answer, which would actually, in conjunction with whether or not you answer the question correctly, determine the interval at which you would be tested on that question again. So for example, if I answered a question correctly, but I chose the okay face, I wasn't completely confident about my answer, I would then be tested on it again in two days. I cannot emphasize how important it is to have a built-in space repetition program for you so that you don't actually have to do it manually. Everything in Lectorio is so well organized by systems and it creates a really seamless learning experience. You can actually check out the link in the description box below to start your free trial and jumpstart your learning today. Work on your bicep muscles. <laughs> Number three is this concept of active recall. Mm -hmm. So active recall is a process in which you actively stimulate your memory for a piece of information. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand this concept until later on in my medical career, but this is a really important way on trying to figure out how to memorize and how to learn new concepts. Medicine is a super complicated field. There's so many things you need to know in medicine and you can't know all of those things at the same time. But as a resident and as a doctor, this is the kind of the way that you learn. When you're seeing patients out on the wards or out in the hospital, um, your attendings may often pimp you, which means that you're seeing a patient and this particular topic comes up, they'll ask you questions regarding care, as well as you know other basic concepts regarding that. So for example, if you have a patient who has a high heart rate, tachycardia, they may ask you, oh, what are all the different reasons why someone may have a high heart rate and you have to think about oh what are the different mechanisms for that so this is in contrast to passive studying which a lot of people like to create notes and then read off your notes which actually doesn't require any active recall of information which is why it's so ineffective to give an example of active recall i like to take my notes and i list out all the different topics that are within a certain exam i read the name of the topic and then i will actually orally recite and regurgitate the information that I know regarding that topic and based on what I can recite then I can identify where my problem areas are and where I need to do a little bit more studying. There's also plenty of other examples like you can do question banks and that's a big way in which medical students learn how to take step one is to just do questions and you have to actively try to figure out the answers. Mm -hmm. You can use this active <laughs> recall method in terms of how you write questions for your flashcards. Finally, you can use classmates and friends um, using this Feynman method, which is you learn something and then you try to teach it to someone else, mm -hmm. whether they're in the medical field or not. I think the overall concept is actually fairly simple here. You need a little bit of stress. You need to bring your heart rate up when you're learning. You can't just be staring at a screen and think that you can remember all the things that a textbook says. You have to actively engage um, in the process. Active recall tends to be a little bit more uncomfortable than other studying methods, which is why I think is the reason a lot of people stay away from it. But there are time and time again studies that show that it's actually the most effective study technique. And finally, number four, prioritization of information. I think this goes without saying, but there is so much information that you learn in nursing school and medical school, and there's simply no way to memorize it all. To give you an example, I typically would have blog exams every four weeks, and every week my lectures would have between 100 and 200 slides. So every exam is about 800 PowerPoint slides. You really just have to figure out what you actually need to know for the exam versus what you don't need to know for the exam. There's always time to learn more things down the road. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of the times professors will give you study guides or course objectives and what I like to do is organize the information into the study guides and whatever information doesn't fit into that guide probably isn't the most relevant or pertinent for this exam. So maybe you can learn it later on down the line when it's useful again. And that's the end of this video. I hope you found these tips helpful and that it expedites your studying process a little bit. Let us know in the comments down below if you are a nursing student, a medical student, if you're trying to get into school, where you are in your journey. And also let us know if you have any other videos that you'd like to see. Make studying enjoyable. Being a medical professional is, you know, a lifelong learning process. Yeah, you never and stop so... learning. <laughs> All right, don't forget that you are a... 10 out of 10, 100%. And don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. And your best is enough. We'll see you next time. Bye.